Okay. All right. So, um, hello, everybody. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are, with whatever part of the world that you are from. Welcome to the uh, introduction to the WordPress Open Source Project session. So, this session is uh, it's the first learn-up session for our uh, mentorship group. It is primarily aimed at mentees, especially folks who are new to the project. And uh, I'm the one presenting. My name is Hari. Uh, I'm one of the co-organizers of the Contributor Working Group. And I've been contributing to the Word WordPress for a while. Uh, but uh, I'd like this to be a collaborative session. I'd like help from especially our mentors and mentees who are more experienced. So the idea is we all share about WordPress to folks who are comparatively new. So we all we all learn something and we all teach something. So uh, I have some slides uh, and I, I hope it's not too long, uh, but we'll try to wrap up in around 30 to 45 minutes. Uh, and by the end of it, I hope you all get a basic idea about the project. So we're not talking about WordPress, we're talking about WordPress.org, the project. So this, uh, it's it's a vast project. There's so many, uh, there's so many things to it, so many parts to it. And uh, maybe we can even have a, if we have time, we can do some screen sharing to get some folks to share about some things. And then I'd like to wrap up by but even but sharing a bit about how um, you know, how decisions are made in the project, how 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 work happens and all that. So, all right, without further ado, I'm gonna get going because we have a lot of slides. Uh, yeah, so these are this is what we're going to cover today. I'm going to introduce you to the project and like share about the different WordPress teams, uh, share very briefly about how WordPress is built, and we are going to end with a case study. So the case study is uh, on how we got uh, XML sitemaps in code. Even though it's related to code, it essentially shows how the project works. So how do how are decisions made in different teams and uh, so the idea is by the end of the session, you get a primer of how the project operates and how decisions are made and all that. And of course, like uh, before that, we introduce you to, you know, all the nukes and corners, not all, but at least some, most of the nukes and corners of the project. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'd like to start with some history. And uh, how many of you have seen this blog post? I keep going back to it. It's a, it's a nice blog post. I'm going to share this in the chat. So this is how WordPress started. Uh, this this uh, this person who was going to college in Houston, Texas, he uh, he had a blog and he wanted to do something about it because it's uh, he was using a software called B2 Cafe Log, which basically stopped working. So he put out a blog post, uh, you know, trying to inviting somebody to help him fork it so that they can make something. So this guy's name is Matt Malenberg. And uh, this guy, his name is Mike Little. Mike, Matt is from Houston, Texas. Mike is from the UK. So Mike says, hey, if you're serious about forking B2, let's let's work on it. So these people worked on it. They they collaborated over, over the internet on a blog post. And we have the, we got this uh, WordPress 0.7. This is, this is like, this is actually just a little bit after the first version came out. So WordPress 0.71. This is how WordPress.org used to look like. So they created uh, the open, open source software WordPress, which became insanely famous. Uh, it was then WordPress.org launched. Then it grew like anything in the next 20 years. And this website is now this. So yeah, uh, in the past 20 years, WordPress has grown. It is, uh, it's it's powering so many websites, including whitehouse.gov. This screenshot actually should have nasa.gov as well. But yes, uh, a lot of websites from all over the world, from not just, you know, small, uh, you know, uh, small businesses or bloggers. So it started off as a blogging software. Now it's it powers enterprises. It uh, almost powers 43% of the web. So this, this chart really shows the market share. So this is the, I, I believe this is the latest as of the end of 2023. The numbers may have changed, but yes, we are still the market leader compared to everything else. So the, 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 the closest competitor, I think is Shopify it comes to 4% and uh, even more than none, so every we, we are the biggest pie in the chart. Now, don't take this with a pinch of salt though. Uh, because uh, you know, the world is changing, the world is evolving. But yes, at this point, we are uh, we are uh, we are definitely a market leader. And it's all thanks to uh, a group of intrepid open source volunteers, like folks like you all. So they they built this. This, this is not built by a company, this is built by volunteers, and that's the beauty of it. Uh so with that out of the way, 
let's look at the project. So I've you can see an assortment of screenshots in this. This is essentially um I mean, obviously it's not the entire project, but this is a slice of the project. These are the different aspects of the project. I'm gonna walk you through uh, the different uh, aspects of all of the of the project. So the WordPress.org comprises of so many you know websites. You may be familiar with some of them, like themes and plugins, but there's a lot more. Um, uh, and uh, I'm going to try and share about some of them here. This time. So everybody knows WordPress.org. That's the home page. Uh, that's that's the site that connects to everything else. We have everything here. Uh, I don't want to, you definitely know about, everybody here in this call definitely knows about the themes website. We have 11,000 themes and the coolest thing is we have block themes coming up. And in fact, our mentorship program has a, project which works on a community theme. So you see this little block called community in the screen chart. So we, this group is going to create, add a theme to this directory, which I'm very excited about. You all don't need me to tell you about plugins as well. Of course, uh, plugins extend WordPress. And if themes change the design of WordPress, plugins extend WordPress. Um, quickly moving on, WordPress has official mobile apps, which is managed by a make WordPress mobile team. We'll get to teams in a bit, but, uh, there are official mobile apps which you can use to you know install on your phone. It works on our platforms. This is a very interesting page. It's slightly controversial as well. I'm going to share the before that. I'm, I forgot to share the list link, which I'll do right now. Um, there you go. So, yeah, this is the hosting page. WordPress uh, has a list of recommended hosting providers. This has been the so if you if you've been in the WordPress community, this has been the topic of a lot of discussion, especially in the past few years. But yes, WordPress has some official hosting providers, which are listed here. Uh, this is a very new project which came into WordPress. It, it uh, How many of you here have heard of Creative Commons? Can I have a show of hands? Yes. So Creative Commons uh, had a search feature, feature it's called CC Search. Uh, uh, the employees of uh, basically WordPress, the WordPress project uh, sort of like em embraced or like invited in the CC search team. So the CC search team is now sponsored to work on this tool called open search. So it's, what I'm trying to say is CC search, Creative Commons search has become open verse. It's a part of WordPress now. So it has its own make WordPress team. Again, we'll, we'll get to teams in a bit. So it's an open search directory. So if you're not familiar with it, it's really cool. I use it a lot for my search needs. Um, yeah, so it's a it's a good site to, you know, view if, if, you've, if you're not familiar with it. So this is the this is the site you all should be following. So if you've not if you're not following this, please sign up. So this is the official WordPress news blog. We have all the major updates about the project published in this site. So if you are serious about WordPress, please uh, I, I've I've subscribed to it over email. So if you're interested, if you'd like to keep up with what's the latest happenings in WordPress, this is the site that you all should be following. Again, I've shared the link in chat. This is an excellent resource which is being built. Uh, again, it's built by the Make WordPress training team. Again, we'll get to teams in a bit. But uh, this is launched in 2020. It has been there for a while. So Learn WordPress, uh, I, I think it was officially born around 2014, but it was kind of inactive. In 2020, during the pandemic, it came back. So currently, this is an official resource for learning WordPress. So you are in the mentorship program. We did share some courses for you in the beginning of the week. Uh, so please, if you if you are available, please uh, complete them. It's very helpful for you as you go forward. This is a bunch of tutorials and some exciting things are happening in this uh, platform. They're trying to build learning paths and you know they already have courses. They're trying to do course cohorts. So imagine being in a cohort like this, learning about blocks. That would be cool, right? So, um, so whoever is interested, we don't have a bunch of folks on training team contributing to the training team as part of this cohort. We had, in fact, one of our su successful contributors in the last cohort is still very active in the, they were in the training team, they're still active, but it's a great team. If you want to follow them, we'll, we'll get to teams in a bit again. Um, yes, Courtney, uh, fantastic. Uh, so yes, Courtney has offered help with training. Training, it's, it's, one, of, it's one, of, one of my favorite teams. So if you are interested in contributing to that team, please reach out to Courtney. Um, Yes. So, uh, documentation. This this is uh, this is where WordPress documentation lives. So, we have everything uh, documented about WordPress. Again, this is handled by the docs team. 
this this page was called differently. It used to be called WordPress.org slash support, but they've changed it now. Again, we have folks working on documentation as part of this code. Uh, so whoever is interested, um, I invite you to be a part of it. Just a second. I'm going to, I think I skipped a few slides. Uh, yeah. All right. So uh, we have the support forums. Um, just a second. I'm going to share the link. So, yeah. If you if you need help with WordPress, this is this is where you ask questions. Again, we have a we have a group of folks working on support for this uh, uh, cohort as well. So this is a place where you ask questions. But as contributors, you can help out in these forums. So that's definitely one thing you can do. Developer resources. This is a site that is revamped recently and still it's still being worked on. It's also handled by, mostly by the docs team and folks in core and all that. So again, bunch of contributors across different teams. Um, but yes, uh, if you're a developer, this page, it's be, it's constantly being updated. It has, it's, it will be your source of truth to follow what's happening with WordPress. And this is a fairly new initiative that has come up again, thanks to the help of different contributor teams, core documentation. Um, it's a great blog. It has some excellent content. So if you are serious about your WordPress development, please, please follow it. And there's a lot of cool stuff happening in WordPress. And if you would like to follow along, uh, this is one place which I would recommend that you all follow. Uh, this is the coolest. WordPress Playground is the coolest thing that has come up in WordPress. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't call it the coolest, but it's one of the coolest things uh, that has happened in WordPress of late. Uh, I would like somebody to demo this. Can I can I ask a mentor to maybe so because I like to blow some folks' minds. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to do it myself. Yeah. I can I can do that. Patricia, okay. You're a co-host, um, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna stop my screen sharing. Do you wanna yes? Yeah. Um yes. So behold sure. the magic yeah. of uh what was playing around folks. Yes. Uh it's uh, disabled for, for me. You have to oh, no. you but uh, you are a co-host. You are you you should have uh, just a second. Uh, okay. Uh Hmm. All right. Uh, yeah. I, I think you should have permissions, Patricia. You are a co-host. It's a written you... host disabled participant screen sharing. <laughs> oh no. Just a second. Let me uh let At me see if I can time, fix that. I'm, I'm going to uh you know what? I have fixed it. Yes. Go for it. You should be able to share now. Okay. So yeah. screen share. Yes. Now uh Good. I will just share this one. So here on uh, wordpress.org slash playground you see the you see the, the all the information about it and if you click on try wordpress playground or if you type directly playground.wordpress.net is dot net here so you arrive on um on, on a, a a great uh tool uh, made with uh web assembly uh, that i think that <laughs> that um, you can test uh, WordPress is actually running in your browser. So I hope the, my computer resources are okay, but it's running in, it runs in your browser and you can change here um, if you want to try on a, another PHP version, you can try here. For example, if something you want to test, if it works with the latest PHP, you can also choose to uh, st store the information in your browser or even on your device, but not in Firefox. I am in Firefox. I, I should use another one to, to do that. And then here you can choose which uh, version of WordPress you want to test. So for example, I, if I want to test the, the, the new uh, beta 2 of 6.5, I do that. I will try PHP 8.3. I apply changes. And it will uh, restart. Uh, um, wait, hold on. It will restart the, the the playground with what you chose here. Okay, so it installs uh, a WordPress in your browser. It's running. It's actually a kind of magic for me, you know, because <laughs> I don't know how how they did that, but they they did that. <laughs> the 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 cool dev people that I'm I'm not a dev, so I always admire a lot when there is something like that. And um, if it takes a little bit of time, is because of my computer. It's not because of the playground. 
And then you have uh, a totally functioning uh, website uh, in, in your browser and you can test, um, for example, a plugin, you can test uh, things in, in it. I'm maybe going to change something there. Let's uh, say this one. Ah, sorry. Uh, this is the demo effect, you know, I, I'm reloading. <laughs> Sorry so about is this like the best place for us to test when there's testing happening for new releases or should we have a local something or other for testing? Like, is I'll take that. <laughs> Olga and I can, can help oh, with that one. Yes. Um, Olga is part of the test team and helps write directions that are calls for testing. Also, Anne has indicated getting an influx this release, which is great. We need feedback. But I've seen Anne indicate, Anne is amazing, by the way, at reading all of the stuff happening in GitHub and translating it for average people and helping us really be aware of what we need to pay attention to. Um, Anne has noticed that there's a, a, uh, some things that are only happening in Playground. So just know that Playground can be a little bit weird. What I would advise people to do is use that link in the uh, beta two, because it's going to give you, if you were to set up a query block, you need content and the default playground is only going to give you a hello world post. So this will give you what the themes team uses to test with. And then it will have lots and lots of posts, some also from the accessibility team too for testing. And there's a helpful little button at the top that says test reports. So you can go log those issues. So um, just know that Test first in Playground. If you find a bug in Playground, maybe see if you could reproduce it on something else. But Playground's going to give you a lot of things. And then if you can reproduce it on something besides Playground, go log the issue. Olga, do you have other thoughts or want to share about what the uh, call for testing includes? The first call for, um, for testers is like general one uh, to, I, I hope, I was hoping that we can like involve people to take things easy uh, because um, you need to have um, to like feel things and just poke around firstly because um, most people are not uh, taking testing seriously and they don't know that this is actually a very creative work to do. Uh, you have to be thinking out of the box. So this first. Uh, call is like general one. We are working on the second and uh, further test calls and they will be more about features. But yeah, uh, I advise if you are like serious about testing to um, launch local environment with Docker and everything to um, reproduce um, the site and uh, as much as possible. And, and uh, of course, if you just want to play with some feature, uh, it's much easier to launch playground and now we can launch it uh, trying different patches and it will actually save a lot of time uh, if you, you you don't need to apply patch etc cetera, etc cetera, on your local machine you just can click and it will be done with one button so uh, i think we uh, will be discussing both ways but uh, like a developer i prefer like full local environment with full control in my hands, something like this. So I think we will discuss this in details. I have I had a quick um, talk about tasting like in 15 minutes in, um, in one of the meetups. I wonder if I was to share it, but I want to discuss things more deeply in upcoming weeks. Yes, that would be awesome, actually. I I changed my browser, <laughs> so <laughs> now you can see I I reloaded and I chose uh, eight point two uh, the latest beta and I also clicked on network access, so I can install plugins. So, uh, th this this Patricia, is really would you also test the link that's in that beta release so folks can see all the content that comes in? Yes. It's going to take a moment just as a heads up because it's a blueprint. So it's saying, go import this content, already activate network plugins. So it's going to take just a smidge longer to do than the version that we're seeing. So the beta two announcement we've linked in the Zoom chat area, if you're able to click that one. 
Okay. Uh, Courtney, could you maybe explain what blueprints are to folks as well? I think yeah, makes... so so there's a difference between actually this might delve over to uh, I might point to one of our other faculty member or uh, mentors here. Um, the version that Patricia just spun up is kind of the vanilla experience, the most plain experience that we can get. To the end of that link, you could say and install such and such plugin and it would boot up with that installed. A blueprint is where things start getting more detailed specific about how you want it to interact. So you can have plugin dependencies going on with that. You could say, please import this content, give me the latest beta. You don't have to switch. You can, it, it's a lot more nuanced, which is why the link for it gets really long. I would love a spot in the project that we could get like a wp.me link or something like that, um, a short link service and log where that is because uh, it it the, the link is too long for anything besides the WordPress post. Yeah, that one. So you see how long that link gets with the, the percent symbols and 20 and ampersand. It's giving it lots of directions of what to import. And so um, I'm working with Adam in the WP Playground area. Playground Meta-Playground is the Slack channel where Playground activity happens. It's kind of considered a subset of the Meta team. And so if folks would like to get involved in some of those areas, see the meta dash playground. Um, so yeah, it takes a little bit longer with the import content, but the advantage with this is that you're going to get all the theme unit data. So you have dummy posts. So if you're going to test the query block or something like that, you don't want to have to write six posts to test the query block. This is going to bring that in for you so that you've got some of that content ready to go it will default to whatever the latest theme is. Um, it's going to default to whatever the beta version is. That's one of the little bugs that we're working on is that this past release, it took 24 hours for the playground to pick up that there was a beta available. Um, so we're working on refining some of that. This is still fairly new territory, but it's really powerful and easy. This even works on mobile devices. Um, I'll just say though, that passing the link around, if you tried to copy paste that link, into like iMessages or some other places. Slack handles it, but Discord tells me no. <laughs> yeah, anyway, you get the idea. So we'll see when it finishes the import. I'm sorry if it's taken a little bit there. Yeah, it's also my my own computer. I'm sorry, <laughs> but may, maybe uh, we can- No, it's uh, mostly- Yeah, okay. That's normal, okay. <laughs> yep. So so uh, when it's on, you want me to to test the query block and stuff in the editor? Or? Uh, let's show folks the test reports plugin that was built by two of our core folks, Andy and uh, Colin. Andy is a an OR trauma surgeon who finds hobby work with working on core. Um, Andy is is legendary. Get to know Andy. But Andy and Colin built this amazing plugin that if you find a bug and you're like, I don't know how to write a, a test, uh, like a bug report or something like that, um, it's all we're go going to become included. So if you want to show all posts and then the test report will be in the admin bar at the top. And Alex, I think you're unmuted. Thanks. And maybe maybe we can have uh, Harry to continue the presentation, and when it's ready, I come back there, right? Yeah, sounds like a plan. Yeah, I can I can I can take over and continue. So Patricia, just let me know when it's done, and we can. Yeah, cool. All right, I'm gonna quickly go back to sharing my screen. I've I've also shared the test reports plugin as well, and yeah, okay, you 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 can find Andy and Colin in the credits. All right, so I'm gonna. Go back to sharing my screen. Just a second. Okay. So yeah. So playground is amazing. I hope you all got a taste of it. And please feel free to try it out a lot. And I was thinking maybe we could get uh, some of the folks working on playground to come about and uh, you know show more detailed demo of this tool because it's so awesome. All right. So um, we have WordPress.tv, which is uh, where we have videos of all WordPress events all over the world listed and as well as sessions like this. So for the last mentorship program, we had some onboarding sessions which were published here. So meetups, word camps, all of these come up here. And we have a, we have a mentor for the TV team as well. Nilo. Nilo, do you want to talk a bit about WordPress or TV? Since you are a moderator and you're also mentoring. Sure. <laughs> what do you want me to talk? 
Yeah. Just just share anything that you'd like to. I mean, to... Okay, the short story is that is uh, YouTube for WordPress. So it's all videos related somehow with WordPress, with WordCamp, with Meety, uh, with WordPress meetups, uh, learn WordPress, all of that is hosted here. So uh, for example, for every single WordCamp, we try to get all the session recordings uh, uploaded to WordPress TV. That means that you have uh, around 15 years worth of uh, WordPress content in there. You can look for whatever you want and probably it is in there. Also, you can see people 15 years younger, which in some cases <laughs> is quite an experience. And uh, apart from the work camps, as I said, uh, you are also welcome to, uh, if you participate in a WordPress meetup, if you do the recording of your meetup, you can also upload there. The rules are really simple, no, so no promotion. Uh, no logos but in the introduction and just keep the content uh, uh, focused to teach people to uh, let people uh, know about WordPress and know about self -prom promotion about for that is everything is welcome thanks thanks yeah so it's a cool tool and uh, Mentis as you are in this program for the next five weeks give the slide a spin whenever you're free it's a, it's a gold mine of amazing content i found some great gems uh like hidden yes <laughs> in there so it's it's really good it's, it's 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 if you are passionate about wordpress you know going down the rabbit hole in the site is it can provide some great content so just offering a recommendation all right moving on uh this is a cool part of WordPress, which came out. Uh, so we mentioned about how open was became part of the project. But towards the end of 2021, uh, we got a new project called WordPress, WordPress Photos Directory. I'm going to share a link to this in the chat. And we we have uh, mentors and mentees working on this team in this cohort as well. So this is maintained by the Make WordPress Photo team. It's an open source photo directory, which has at this point around 15,000 photos. So anyone can contribute photos here. There's again, some guidelines, like you can't have faces. The photos should not be blurred. They should be of high quality. You can't do edits. You can't have like big words. So there's a bunch of guidelines, but it's fairly straightforward. So it's a great way to contribute to WordPress. I mean, you don't, and, and to be clear, you don't need a DSLR or a, a mirrorless camera or an expensive camera to, you know, submit photos here. Um, you can, you can just upload any photos that you take with your smartphone as well. So again, a call for all our mentees. If you, this is a great way to contribute to WordPress. And I would, I would like all our mentees to upload at least one photo to the directory while you're here. It's a, it's a, uh, it doesn't take a lot of time. So once you upload, there's a team of moderators who review the photos, and uh, you know they approve it. It gets published. That's that's what it is. <laughs> Sorry, you does anybody want to add? Profile. Yes, 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 yes. Of course. Almost immediately. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Does uh, anybody want to share anything more about the photos team? Yes, I wanted to add that uh, also for uh, people who are trying to set up a WordPress community, uh, WordPress Photos is a great tool because a photo walk is something that is really easy to organize. <laughs> and it's a very simple way of getting people together, uh, go for a walk, uh, get photos, and teach them to contribute to the photo directory. I yeah, want so to point that these photos will be on your profile on WordPress. So uh, keep in mind this. <laughs> Possibly they will uh, talk for yourself about yourself. Yes, yes, yes. How cool is that? Huh? And of course, uh, this. So if you search for images in OpenWorks, they show up. And I, I think it shows up in Google Images and things like that as well. But it definitely shows up in OpenWorks. So. Uh, yeah. Go, go ahead, Milo. Sorry, uh, sorry, another thing that you didn't say. Uh, the really cool thing about uh, WordPress Photos is that the license is a uh, license uh, Creative Commons, but by, it is CC0, which is uh, the closest thing to public domain. So you can use that photos for whatever you want yes. in big capital letters. If you develop a theme, a theme you can include the photos there. If you uh, sell prints, you, what, you can do whatever you want with those, with those photos. Yes, yes, yes. See how cool it is. <laughs> so we have so many of these cool projects within, our pro within, within WordPress itself. And this is, in my opinion, again, one of the coolest things that we have. And it's growing. We have 15,000 photos now. 
hopefully we'll get to like 100k or even 1 million at some point that would be awesome All right uh so i think it's time for us to move to events so um ohai just mentioned that she's going to be for a local word camp meeting so again uh yes we have uh, speaking of word camps word camps again are wordpress conferences which are organized around the world in 2019 we had 140 140 word camps uh, all over the world so these are these are city based typically um and these are informal events where people come together and you know uh, it's it's in an unconference style so we have speakers we have workshops we have contributor days those are interesting events um so we have a bunch of events coming up so if you go to this website you will see what are the events that are coming up i'm going to share the link again but uh wordpress events are not just word camps we have wordpress meetups as well so the latest number so what is a wordpress meetup uh again there are different cities all over the world in each city there's a local chapter of wordpress so it's at this point all these meetups are in meetup.com so uh we have uh, 755 groups which means 755 cities all over the world have wordpress meetups and we have that spread across 108 countries and we have more than 500k members at this point so this this map makes me so excited seeing all these events and so all these groups so yeah we 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 are literally all over the world and all these folks are organizing local events so meetups are different from word camps um so in a meetup it's a smaller event uh, a, a closely knit maybe 10 15 20 people coming together maybe once a month organized more regularly word camps are like a big conference which which has sponsors it's, it's in a it's in a conference style typically has like 50 100 1.1 50 200 people and we also have flagship word camps so we have uh, word camp asia coming up in a few weeks we have what can europe we have what can us and maybe other flagships are coming up as well which brings me to uh, events.wordpress.org so this is a new project uh, that came up from our community last year uh, so the meta team kudos to them for and and i think in collaboration with the community team they they've built it so this is a new website where which tries to list all events all over the world together uh it shows what are the events that are scheduled and how many countries we have folks from how many participants that we have so it's a really cool site and um so i think nilo shared this link earlier in our channel like so there's online events so not all of these events are in person there's a bunch of online events as well which means you can sit i, I can sit in my home in kochi india and attend a meetup in europe or in the us or in africa so uh this site lists all those events and as we were discussing in another call Uh, last week it's maybe a great way to learn a new language so i have i have a friend who is in the us they they attend meetups in france and spain and it's a great way for them to learn the language <laughs> uh, uh actually for post- free for free that's that's the best that's beautiful <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm going to pause for a moment i see a few community people here does anybody want to share more about what camps what does meetups are in person events i want to point that uh, if no one is actually running meet up in your lo- local area you can do it and a community can help and provide guidance for people who wants to launch local meet up group yes absolutely yeah. in fact I, we have a reactivation group in our meet up cohort as well sorry go on yeah when when i first started uh, to co organize uh, meetups in my city i actually didn't know that i was contributing to the wordpress project i didn't know there was a world community i just knew that there was a group in my city that someone said okay uh, i'm leaving the town uh, do you want to be an organizer and then i discovered the community i discovered that i contributed actually to the community team so yeah So as Olga said if there is none in your area in your region you can just start a meetup group um there is a there is a link in the handbook uh, for organizers how to do that and I'm going to share af- after Harry I'm going to share with you a page uh, with all the links to all the teams so you will find everything that you that, that that all the links that have been pasted pasted uh, in this uh, chat are going to be there and by the way the playground now is working <laughs> so if if uh, you want me to share again yeah do you want to maybe share your screen and i'm going to i'll i'll stop sharing oh, stop okay. sharing oh, okay. yes uh, okay 
uh, screen share <laughs> and and sorry about that, you know. Uh, that was on Chrome. Yes, this one, I think. Uh, and by the way, this is my profile. I want I wanted to show that, you know, I got the photo contributor here because I uploaded six uh, photos. Oh my gosh, so beautiful. Sorry for interruption. <laughs> there, there, are, there are people with like 100, 500, 800, but most of the people have a few. And you upload one and you have uh, your uh, photo contributor badge appearing in your profile. So it's uh, the, the easiest badge to get actually. And now the playground. So I I installed based on what Courtney uh, suggested. So it, it means that there is already content and installed plugins. That's why it took so long. So this yeah. is the, the, the test report. So what what do you want me to do, Courtney? Uh, <laughs> let's on, show on let's show the posts real quick. If you click on posts, you'll see that there are lots of posts already in there. Yeah, oh. I do it all all posts. I, yeah, yeah, but I I clicked, but again. it's loading so slowly. I, I'm not sure I was the good person to to oh. to, 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 to to do the demo. Oh, because... so sorry. That's okay. Oh, no. it, just just believe for now, folks, that if you went to all posts, it would have lots of posts. Also, uh, Patricia, could you try hitting the back arrow in your browser one time? And then let's see if it shows since I that was in the memory. No, I think it's... When we first came in, do you see at the top of your screen, folks, that there is a little B icon and it says test reports in the admin bar? That's where we yeah. were when we first saw Patricia's screen. And that area will help you. It gives you a template for writing, whether it's GitHub or track tickets. So Ooh. the difference between if it's, in, if it's dealing with blocks, you're probably going to log the issue in GitHub. If it's dealing with something that does not have that block experience yet, you might land in this place called track. And that's a whole discussion for a different time. But it will give you a quick template of how to log the issue. And so participating in testing is really, really valuable. And one of the things the Playground does is that on the top right, there are some export tool options. So if you want to take this test environment and then say, export it out and go use local WP, it has an export migration for um, taking the site and moving it to other places. Um, I don't know yet. I haven't tried to take the site and put it into Docker yet, but I believe it would just give you an export of the site and you could load it then. Yeah. And even if you want just to, to submit a, a report and you copy to clipboard, all the environment is listed here. Yeah. So this, this is good. And yeah. you, you and the links are there that tell you go before you file a new one. Let's search to see if there's already one of those out there, and you could verify and say yes, I I had the same experience. That's valuable information. I can reproduce that thing, um, or oh nope, there aren't already issues about this anywhere. So I will create that, and it will give the entire setup environment and the copy to clipboard that you can give away. Um, yeah, so it makes and it easy. Yeah, and this is the post that you asked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. So all posts, you see that there are examples of all of these different things. This comes from the theme unit test data, which is a, a WordPress list of posts and uh, you can import the, the posts and the media attachments. That's been done for you. That's why it took a while to get this version running. Um, not all of it was Patricia's locale. It was also just that there's a lot to import. You're importing an entire website of content specifically already created for your testing purposes. So and there's a lot of good things in there to dig into. And it runs in your browser. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and under that drop down, like I said, under the drop down in the top right where it says PHP 8, um, there's some methods in that area to take it from the browser and say, I want to go elsewhere. I think that's it's not here. Uh is it under the yeah, there it is, under the the hamburger icon. So you can download it as a zip file or export pull request to GitHub. There's a lot you could do. Yeah. Nice. Amazing. Okay. <laughs> so All right. wh while I'm here, do you want me, uh, Harry, to show the the, um, the page that I mentioned? So I yes, can... yes, 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 yes. So I yeah. just need to copy from my other browser now. Uh, page how and where to start contributing. So we have been doing a page. 
that I'm going to, to, to paste now here. We are going to share that link. So it's um, in one of the community uh, team handbook and everything is explained how to and where to start contributing. So we present here, there's, there are a lot of links that helps you to understand because the, 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 the WordPress ecosystem is very vast. And as a new contributor, um, I have been feeling like that for years, you know, it's a bit overwhelming because you never know where to find things, what team does what, uh, which team does what, and um, where to find the things. So this is specifically for um, new contributors. So you can find uh, stuff like um, global Slack meeting, where to find the meetings. There is a meeting page, a course, handbooks, etc. And then by team, we have been listing um, the the all the the team site okay that you can find on make wordpress.org and uh the handbook and the uh, onboarding videos when they exist for example for core and that was i think uh um olga presenting for the last cohort last uh, last year so there is an onboarding um video to show uh, to people how to start contributing to to core so th this is a video for onboarding that was from the first cohort of the mentorship program and for um for teams that do not have a video we are going to provide the links to the new videos that the the, the mentors in the design team are going to do with their mentees in, in our program so then there will be um onboarding video for more teams because for now it's empty there and some um some of the team can do also an overview of five minutes because not all teams have mentor in our program so at least there will be a video like our team does that and you can discover if this is interesting for you if that team does things that uh, are exciting for you to contribute to so this is like um, a page where you can find everything linked to from a single place of, of entry. And at the end, there are more links and in the more links, there, there, there are things that uh, Harry has shown you. So everything is there. And this page, I'm going to paste the link now. It might be moved in some time, but for now it's here. So I'm going to, to share that in the chat and you can just test, try all the links or try the links in the area that you that, that you like. So, yeah, it's a bit long. <laughs> so this is a work in progress and more links are going to be to be added and new videos are going to be added. Uh, the video that, uh, that will be done in, in part of that uh, cohort of the mentorship program. Okay, so Harry, uh, is that okay? If I leave now, you can finish alone. <laughs> it's, uh, it's all okay. You are muted. Sorry. Yeah, please, please, I'm, please I'm go ahead. I'm joining an, another meeting, actually, that started 15 minutes yeah. ago. Okay. Yeah. Thank cool. you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. All right. Bye. Okay. So I think I think Patricia did a lot of explaining. Uh, she shared a lot about uh, the different teams that we have, so which made my job a lot easier. So I can, I can go ahead. I just want to share a few more uh, parts of the WordPress project, which you may not be aware of. So did you all know that we have an official job board? So it's called jobs.wordpress.net. Courtney here runs, basically manages the site. So Courtney, do you want to maybe share a bit about the job site? Sure. Yeah. So I will I will defer that Chris Wegman of WP Engine actually is the one that, that's most oh. of this work. Um, Jonathan and I are in as substitutes. I am often, I, I check on it usually a couple times a week just to make sure that there's nothing sitting around there. Chris? Somehow, even though he has one time zone behind me, manages to clear through the queue <laughs> before I wake up. Um, so at, this site is has been around in the project for quite a long time. It is a place where you can anyone can submit a WordPress related job. Um, and I believe it's also in the upper nav menu area and they're broken down by the kinds of jobs that are there. They will automatically fade away in about 14 days. So I think we're in the, you know, fortnight two weeks time zone there. If people would like to post a job, there is a helpful link at the top of the menu. If you use RSS, you can customize which of these things that you want to receive updates about. Um, I do share them from my personal Twitter 
as well. We would like to get a Twitter that automatically sends them and or to other platforms. I think there's one for Mastodon, uh, like a bot that's sending some of them too. So it's a place that you could go in and check for jobs. There are more like gigs or projects, I think is one of the areas. Hmm, they sort of list when you go to the post a job. Um, Hari, if you could, in the black at the top, it says post yeah. job. Yeah. Uh, and in there, it's going to say, is this a, in the details, it will ask, like, is this a full-time or a part-time or a contract kind of thing? So there's different details that as you read through some of these jobs that you can find. Um, and then also at the top, if you have any questions about the kind of jobs that are there, or you see anything that might be inappropriate, like it doesn't even mention WordPress or related things to WordPress, like PHP, um, the FAQ area at the top is another area to call out. I know that we're eager to have this part of the project. I think Matt even mentioned it on some social media in the past two weeks, uh, wanting this site to get a fresh coat of paint. Uh, it's yes. part of the redesign work. And I'll defer to uh, those that are part of website redesign, Nick, for when the timeline of that rollout to other areas would be. So under the hood, it's classic editor and folks that are sending in stuff, fill out the form. So it doesn't get a lot of formatting to it. It auto disappears after two weeks. I would love to see it built out a little bit more robust since it was first created. Um, and we have some people that have expressed interest in also being around as one of those substitutes or maintainers of this. So Chris has done it almost solo for a decade until I started saying, hey, if you ever need a break, let me know. Um, I'm happy to at least fill in when you're out for sure. I would love to see other people be able to take on more there. Thanks. Thanks. I think this project has a lot of potential for the yep. community. Oh, absolutely. So it needs yeah. to be promoted and updated and yes. it can be yes. launched into space. Yes. Uh, yes. I would love to also see us get locales on this for those of you that I know are... Yep. very interested in various locales yes. right now everything must be in english and i there's not much of the project where we say that um so i would love to see jobs boards like this for the locales too maybe i'll hunt down toby nice <laughs> yeah. who's also just in the in cohort so you can you can just find him he's around <laughs> perfect so yeah, that's a cool site you all should check. So, and it has a lot of openings. So if anyone of you is interested in a job change or if you want to post a job, please give it a try. Moving on, this is also a cool site that came out recently. I mean, it's been around for a while. It has had a recent, like, like Courtney said, a fresh coat of paint. So it showcases a lot of the cool websites that are around WordPress. Uh, it is a, and you can also submit your own entries uh, to the WordPress showcase. I've shared the link in, in chat. So WordPress celebrated its 20th anniversary last year. Um, and we had a micro site to celebrate that. If you want to, I mean, it's over now. We are, we are on, on our 21st year right now as we speak. Uh, but if you would like to, you know, take a look at how the 20th celebration went and it has some, some content and some keynotes, some videos, some meetups and all that. It's a, it's a good memory to have. We had a similar site for, I think, 15 and even the 10th anniversary, I believe. So it's something that happens. I want to quickly talk about the WordPress Foundation as well. Um, so I'll share the link here. Um, WordPress Foundation is a nonprofit. It's a 501c3 uh, nonprofit in the US. So this is a foundation that essentially holds the WordPress trademarks. So the this W logo, as well as the name WordPress, it holds these trademarks. Um, the foundation does not own WordPress. Though. WordPress is owned by the community, but uh, the foundation does own the trademarks and it's it is done that way so that like, if there's a change of management or something, the the project remains open source. So, it was uh, if there's some history to it. I won't get into the history directly, but yes, uh, that's why we have the foundation. They also do a bunch of things. They accept donations. They work on some projects like do action hackathons. They used to have open source workshops. They donate to a lot of courses, uh, courses uh, like uh, public code and I guess girls who code and all that. So I'm gonna I was just I think I've shared the link here. You can find out more about the foundation in their website. Yeah, I want to uh, wrap up talking about our, uh, you know, the different parts of the project by with this book. So did you did you all know that there's a there's an actual WordPress book which, like anything in WordPress, was built by contributors. So there's two books actually. This is what you're seeing is the first one. Uh, this came out I think in I believe in in uh, it came out alongside the the first ten years, the tenth anniversary of WordPress. It's called Milestones: The Story of WordPress. So it's 
it shares the story of WordPress from its beginning to 2013. And alongside the 20th anniversary, we have a new book. So this is called uh, uh, Building Blocks, the Evolution of WordPress. Uh, I think the link has already been shared. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. Courtney shared the links again. I'm, I'm going to share another link here as well. So, yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, so this is a... Um, this is a great, uh, I, I, I'm reading this book at this point, and I think a few of us in this group has, have also read it or are in the process of reading it. It's a great book. It you know, showcases things. So if anyone here in our cohort is interested, maybe we can do a reading challenge. Uh, we can read this book together. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I just want to quickly uh, talk about what Olga mentioned. We had a project called WP Translation Day. Uh, it's not a, it's, yeah, it, it is an official project. It was done by Polyglots contributors. Um, it's not part of the official WordPress directory yet, but uh, we didn't have one. It's a, it's, it's like a translation challenge where uh, folks all over the world come together on a day or maybe a week to translate WordPress. So it's a great project. Yeah, I, I want to share a few more links. So WordPress also has an official podcast, the link of which I'm sharing here. So if you're interested in podcasts, do, uh, you know. And incidentally, since we just mentioned the translation day, the latest episode is on Polyglots. So it's uh, hosted by Joseph A. Hayden, who is the executive, executive director of WordPress. So uh, each episode has a, has a has a particular topic, which is which is ongoing in the community, or uh, or, or a relevant topic. So it's, it's a great way to again stay updated on what's happening with WordPress. Um, yeah. Now with that out of the way, I want to quickly. I, I know we have uh, we're almost at the top of the year, so I won't take a bunch of time. But I want to quickly talk about how WordPress does get built. Uh, so there's a few aspects to it. I'm, I'm going to first copy all these links for you so that uh, you all can see it. Just a second. Yeah. So there's a few areas where WordPress gets built. Uh, we have make WordPress sites. So these are blogs, essentially. And there are different each make there are different teams for each project, and we have our communication happening in the WordPress Slack. So you all are in the WordPress Slack, so which we use for long form communication, and what the, the development of WordPress happens over Track. We have a tool called Track. Uh, track is a bug tracking tool. So WordPress itself lives in SVN, and we also use GitHub for many of our projects. Uh, so uh, the Gutenberg plugin, it, it is on GitHub. And in fact, many teams and a lot of uh, sub-projects in WordPress, the development happens in GitHub as well. So, uh, and many make WordPress teams actually rely on GitHub for their work. So these are the four areas where uh, the development of WordPress happens. Courtney, I think Courtney and Olga, maybe you want to add a few more. Uh, so I have some slides, but maybe you want to share a quick overview of these different parts, anything that you'd like to share. I want to mention that you don't need to bother with SVN to participate fully in core development. So you yeah. just need uh, to use your usual flow if you are a developer, push yes. updates to GitHub and everything else will be taken from there by committers. So it, it's quite straightforward job. And I, could, I oh. yeah. Olga, can you help me understand uh, or remember the specific GitHub link? So for those that are interested in logging issues that are, I said earlier that you might have to use track and we'll talk about that. This is the point. So log the issues in track for anything that's not about blocks. However, if you want to do a pull requests, so you're a dev, you want to get working on that, there is a specific repo. So the GitHub link that you see from Hari there is to the entire WordPress organization, Slash but I believe- develop. Just yeah, develop. it's like github.com slash WordPress slash develop. develop will get you yeah. there. I'll, yes. I'll go copy that in. And so you can do your PRs and things right inside of GitHub, not having to muddy about inside of track to submit them. And that is mirrored. Our core committers, usually it ends up being Sergey. <laughs> uh, for some reason, Sergey has his hands on every time that something from GitHub is coming over to track. There are people that are responsible for that back and forth to happen. But if you're like, wow, track is so dated and I don't know how to commit on track, it's fine. Go over to GitHub and you could get it in there. I was talking about this in my talk. So I hopefully it will be helpful and st quite straightforward what to, um, to what to do, how to start. So, and if you have some questions, you can come to me. Nice. Cool. 
Right. So I'm going to very quickly, uh, let's start with make WordPress first. We have some teams and we, we divide that into four sections. One is building, one is extending, one is managing the operations, one is supporting. I think Patricia showed a lot of them in your slides. I'm now I'm not going to go into too much detail. I'm just going to show you all these themes. So building is like core, core works on building the WordPress software itself. We have meta, design, accessibility, test, mobile. We have extending. So like the photos team that you show, saw earlier, photos that you saw earlier of Openverse. We have a CLI. CLI is a command line interface for WordPress. It's really cool. So you, it was again built by contributors. We have polyglots. So we we spoke of the translation day. So these are the folks that make sure that WordPress is translated. The themes, plugins, tied. Supporting again, uh, we we saw WordPress TV. So TV, documentation, community, communities, the team that organizes events, training as learn.wordpress.org. Sustainability is a very new team, and it's, it's those folks are really cool. They're trying to make WordPress sustainable, not just in the environmental way, but also in a way that, uh, you know, WordPress as a project can grow as an open source project and, and is supported because we are run by volunteers. <laughs> Sorry. And finally, we have uh, teams that support operations, which is hosting and marketing. So the link Patricia shared earlier, it is a list of all these teams if you want to go around. And... Many of you must have uh, seen this link, which I'm going to share in uh, in chat, especially in our um, uh, as you apply to this program. Uh, it's a wizard which helps you find the team that you want to contribute to. It was incidentally built alongside our last cohort by a bunch of contributors, which includes Olga, Courtney, Seri, and a bunch of amazing people. It was like a true community effort. And it was nice seeing that tool come into being alongside that cohort. I mean, of course, the cohort didn't build it, to be very clear. But yeah, that's a great tool. It's around. So if you want to play around with it, it's it's uh, if you want if you if you want to find a team to contribute, if you have not used that tool, I've just shared the link. So uh, we we uh, Koti and Olga mentioned track. This is a screenshot of how it looks like. I shared the link earlier. It's a, again, it's a bit complicated. If you're not very familiar with the uh, with the track interface, but uh, we can you you can use the workaround to you know share patches and things like that. This is the this is the GitHub organization of WordPress. It has a bunch of repositories. So uh, these days, a lot of teams make WordPress teams that I shared earlier. They use GitHub for them. Even our working group, we have our own GitHub repository and we have a project board and all that. So and on that note, we need to we will be having a GitHub workshop for this cohort because uh, GitHub is a very popular tool and it was very much in demand. And a lot of the teams that work on our a cohort they use github so it would be very helpful we will be having one soon uh yeah i want to quickly wrap up with this um so we we've seen the different parts i want to quickly talk about how things happen in wordpress like so we we saw these different places we saw uh, track we saw the make blogs we saw slack so i'm going to talk about uh, a project to show you to explain to you how how wordpress works how do um how do things work? So this is not the same case everywhere. This is just an example. And the the idea behind this to give you a, the what I'm what I'm trying to share is to give you an idea about how how you can contribute big projects and how you know projects come to WordPress. So I want to use a real life example. And I it's I've been I was following I was following this live as this happened. It was so cool to see. So I I thought I'd share this example. So um yeah so. How it started was, so a contributor called Thierry Mueller, he first proposed this feature. in And how did he do it? So he he shared a blog post in, in the Make Core blog. I've shared the link to this post, the screenshot of which you're seeing here. So he published this. He, he shared, hey, we need XML sitemaps in WordPress, in Core. I mean, of course, you. Uh, I think, so before we go ahead, I think somebody should share what sitemaps are. Can I have a volunteer? What is a sitemap? I will yeah. think of it like a blueprint to a building, except that this yes. is for search engines and yes. it tells the search engines, here's where everything is. And it also tells the search engines, if you have a new addition, like maybe you add a door between rooms, maybe the search engine should know that there's something new on your site. So if you think of a blueprint that says, here is how this website exists, it's a map to the house. It's basically that, but for search engines on a simplified version. <laughs> yes cool Courtney. thank you Courtney. really cool <laughs> yes but clearly i've taught I was... this to like ninth graders <laughs> yeah i i could see that i could see that you you, you basically yep. broke down so well and 
I know more about sitemaps now. <laughs> so, uh, yes. So that's exactly what sitemaps are. They're, they're like a blueprint. And uh, in the past, you needed to install a plugin or you need to do some customization to have sitemaps in WordPress. So Thierry Muller, who's a WordPress contributor, I think uh, he... He may he he published this post in the Make Code blog, proposing this idea. Um, so obviously that post got a lot of. So that's how you start things in WordPress. You if you have an idea, like um, and a, again anyone can really uh, propose something in WordPress. So theory is a is an experienced contributor. So like he 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 shared, prepared a draft. He, he must have consulted with a, some other contributors and he published this blog post. Uh, and of course, that post, as you can, if you can, if you look at the post, if, if you look at the link that I've shared in chat, it got a lot of comments. And uh, like following positive feedback from that post, Terry decided to work on it. So he got support from other folks as well. So as you can, you can see the contributors, Sander, Kirsty, Joe McGill, Pascal. So they all worked together. And you know what they did? They created a feature plugin. So I'm gonna I'm gonna share these links in chat as well so that you can follow along what's happening. I'm gonna this is the uh, this is the post um, and uh, this is the link to the feature plugin. It's closed now, but for a very while. So I think I I think I don't have the I'll I'll share the plugin link later. But yeah, uh, I think it's it's already linked in the post anyway. So. Uh, they published the post, they they created a feature plugin. So that's how things usually work in code. If you want to add a new big feature, uh, developers usually sort of like create that, create a feature plugin to test it out, test out. So like, as you can see, it's it says core sitemap plugin contributors. So these contributors, they work, work together. They created a feature plugin. So you can install the plugin, you can test it out. So these, that that came out, it's been, it was, it was all going well. So note the dates, Um, sorry. So the first post came out in June 2019. So it they had to wait until January. So work was happening in the background as as uh, and these folks were building the plugin. And of course, like open source doesn't go fast always. Things sometimes are slow. That's okay. That's how that's the that's the beauty of it because with many eyes, all bugs are shallow. <laughs> uh, all right. So they created this feature plugin and they continued working on it. So uh, Pascal, who was another contributor in this project, he published another post saying, hey, uh, let's continue working on this. And he shared about the feature plugin. They uh, So they realized that the value of having synchronous conversations on this. And they were probably talking about this in the core channel in WordPress. So in order to dedicate time towards this, they, were, they asked the meta team and the meta team created a dedicated Slack channel called core sitemaps. So as you can see, like these folks came in, um, so, and uh, one thing that you, if you will notice, they publish milestones in the in the blog. So in this case, it's a core project. So they published a blog post announcing this and they shared the feature plugin, they shared the sitemaps and they even started doing regular meetings. So I'll, I'll uh, share a couple of links for you folks. Follow along. Uh, I think I have a link of the Slack channel here as well. I hope that link works in case you wanna. Yeah. So... Then they continued working on it. So they 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 would discuss in Slack. They would uh, you know uh, then have these meetings to you know regularly check on the project. So in between, so I think in this post they um, uh, they sort of like they had a feature overview. They had a plan, and they used the Slack channel and had regular meetings to coordinate the work. So of course, like this is followed by several discussions. Here's a screenshot of the meeting, and they've had like so many ex exciting discussions and which span several months. So they they had this they had a GitHub repository for the feature plugin. They kept shipping updates to GitHub, and which came out in the feature plugin, which had multiple releases. And finally, um, uh, so uh, so after a long process, after a lot of code reviews and things like that, uh, this uh, the sitemap functionality was merged into WordPress out of the same repository Olga just mentioned to us about. So and finally. It came to WordPress stack, so I, I can I can share these links to you so that you can also see what happened. So this is the beauty of open source; like all of this is documented. You can basically just it's like a time capsule. You can go back in time and see what happened. So I'm sharing those tickets here in the chat for you. So they were merged, and finally we had an announcement. So uh, Pascal published a post in the Make Core blog announcing that we now have sitemaps for WordPress Core, and it came out alongside 
or it was 5.5. So in the release announcement, it, there's, a, there's a mention of this. But alongside that, they also publish a dedicated blog post in the make core blog. So, so in short, uh, let's if you if we quickly go back, uh, there's a proposal. That's when things start. And depending on what you do, so, so again, this is for the core team, but the same proposal applies to all the teams in WordPress. Uh, but again, there may be nuances, there may be some changes. But uh, the idea here is all these people work out in the open and all the communication happens in the open. So they, they publish a public proposal and based on the feedback from the community, they take the next steps. I mean, if the community had said, hey, this is not a good idea, let's, let's not do it. And uh, then this may not have gone forward. This may have ended there, but they they did get good feedback and they uh, they experimented it with it with uh, a plugin. Then they realized that there's a lot of potential too, so they continued talking about it and they realized to have they decided to have dedicated meetings as well. And of course, uh, a lot of, as you can see, all this work happened in the open in the Slack channel and in 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 the blog post. And finally, things were merged, and of course, we had the announcement. So. This is the summary of how you know uh, contributions happen in project in WordPress, especially for big projects. Uh, for minor, uh, minor, uh, you know, minor patches and things like that. Of course, this is not the process. I mean, you can directly go in and do things, but uh, in general, for all make teams, this is how things work. So I just shared this example to uh, share with you how how you know big projects are shipped in WordPress. Uh, I want to pause for a moment. So does I anyone want to have add a bit? Right. Go for it. Yeah. Go for it. Olga. Yes, yes. I, I want to mention that um, we are merging in course some features and plugins that need to be used by 80% of our sites. Yeah. So if uh, some kind of awesome plugin needs to be for like 20% of all sites, it will be staying and supported as a plugin. So this is a difference. We are merging into core something that will be useful for majority. This is uh, our barrier. So that to ends too. It will be plugin or. Oh. Olga, you muted a second or two before your audio stopped. <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, um, sorry. Yeah. There's, I think, I, a little. I made my a point. Little... There's a little lag. So uh, also, in addition to what you're hearing in terms of this is core working, the core team working a new thing through from inception to delivery, they deliver, but, but along the way, there's also a lot of outreach that needs to happen. How might this impact the plugin extender ecosystem? How might this impact the theme ecosystem, the host ecosystem? We need to communicate these things to those players as well as really communicate it to the end users, draw a lot of awareness and attention. So teams like marketing can take part in some of that work. The hosting team can take part in it. There's an email that goes out at release time for the plugin devs. So there's work on helping author the newsletter, basically that the plugin devs get about the release coming up. There's a lot of additional supports is what I'm saying that go into a lot of this work so that the community is really aware because I don't think many of them are reading core. <laughs> I, I would love to think that it's a wildly popular site outside of the contributors, but let's be real. Um, the other side of it too, is that as other teams have initiatives that they are driving, the general idea is how to write a strong proposal that gets all the way through. Sometimes you might just need to log a GitHub issue, a track issue. Um, and other times you might need to turn that into an actual proposal. And so just last night, I messaged in my time, I messaged Hari about one of those, about helping shepherd the community into, um, if you've seen chatter around inside the project, outside the project, about accessibility and writing content accessible first across make sites, across anywhere in .org, um, how we can turn that into, instead of just a uh, track ticket requesting review a plugin for use on .org. How can we convert that into a proper proposal? And then those proposals, just as much as core itself, those proposals could use a call in from the rest of the community, the WordPress people that might be employed, might not be employed, but they're really dependent upon what the contributors are doing, creating awareness about that. So for instance, 
is the content on learn.wordpress.org super accessible? Can people readily access that information? Or they're working on translation issues, making sure that all the content can be translated as well. And so there's a lot of effort around that. A lot of people are saying, yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, we need more people for some of the work that has to get done with that. And I can point people to where to go to have that. And I like that idea of we've gone for proposal to here's our progress to here is the shipped thing. And then sometimes even after we ship, we have to go back and say like, ah, it needs a little maintenance or we might have to communicate some more. That isn't just about the software. Yes, uh, that's exactly it. And uh, uh, that's the beauty of WordPress, right? I mean, and again, I, I think I just want to highlight an important point that you mentioned, uh, Courtney, especially about cross-team collaboration. So it's not just, so we're not, we don't live in silos. Each team is connected to each other. So as you, as you folks start contributing, um, it's something that you might want to keep in mind as well. Uh, so try to collaborate with other teams. And, and of course, like, uh, as you move on from contributing from small projects to big projects, it might seem a bit overwhelming, but you have the entire community with you and you can always learn this process and you can follow along. Uh, it's, it's it's honestly a great way to, you know, learn about software development and even learn about open source and gain a lot of new skills, which is why we're doing this program to, you know, make sure that you all know about this process and to support you as much as possible. All right, so I'm going to, uh, I think we've slightly exceeded our time. So I'm going to quickly, and but that's, that's all that I had to share for you today. Uh, does anybody have any questions, especially to our mentees? Any uh, We have a bunch of experienced contributors here. So uh, if you have any questions on the project or anything that we shared today, playground or anything else, any any questions? I, I have a question again. Yes. I wonder if uh, you can like share this um, presentation and possibly highlight if you are allowing this to translate to different languages. Why not? Like a blueprint for everyone to share this information Why about not? project. Why not? Why not? Why not? I'm totally open to it. I, I, I think that would be a great marketing team project. And, and of course, Polyglots too. So yes. I think we have some WordPress TV folks to help get it yes. uploaded yes. quickly. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I was just wondering if people can, uh, according with your slides, making their own version on their Why own not? language. Why not? Why I think not? it will be much easier. Yes. To do it yes. From scratch. Yes. 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 I think that's beautiful. I think we should we should try and do it. Maybe something for our cohort also to work on. Like we have we have uh, polygods folks. We could translate to Spanish, different languages, uh, Japanese, French, Russian. Actually, this is a great presentation for uh, workouts for the as an introduction to for the contributor day. Yeah. Maybe yeah. a little simplified, but yes. I did similar in Russian, but I I think mine is out a bit out of date already, so <laughs> I need to update it. Yeah. So there's a question from one of our members, uh, from Sakib, who's a mentee. Uh, is there any difference between playground and testing WordPress locally? I mentioned that Anne has found a couple of bugs about testing in playground. Uh, playground runs without a hosting account. It's all in your browser and it's using something called SQLite. And most people are using like MySQL or something like that on their servers. Um, so there are going to be some bugs, uh, but there are less bugs. When this first came out, it was a bit more, and we're only talking, I think we've only had Playground going for less than a year at this point. So it's moving at ridiculously fast speeds, which is great. Uh, I don't know the specific yeah, issues the that problem. might be the bugs that we're finding. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know which, yeah, it's okay. I don't know which specific bugs Anne was referring to. I do know that sometimes there are some. So if you run into something and you uh, can confirm it both in Playground and on something else, that's really helpful in the testing. Huh. Any other, anyone else that has experience with that to know more specifics? I think um, in testing, there are like corners when things are getting out of hands or unexpected when there are like a huge database or some specific um, 
environment. So this is why it's very difficult to catch such things before we are actually going live. This is a problem. We need to bring more people, more developers uh, with real staging sites, with copies of their real sites in staging yeah. environment to test in much uh, of like almost production versions of sites yes. to make sure because they have some kind of sometimes very weird environments, very weird settings on servers. And you cannot um, imagine that it is even possible to have such things. <laughs> so this is a bit difficult to test in uh, any case. Or not uh, strange settings, but just settings that are strange to you. Uh, for example, there have been some bugs in Gutenberg for a long time because they only appear in L2, uh, in R RTL languages, which are the languages mm -hmm. that uh, instead of writing left to right, they write they write right to left. So everything is flip up. So in some, for example, in Arab in Arabic languages, uh, the buttons couldn't be clicked because they were on the other side and there was some a negative margin that doesn't look. So, but as there were there weren't anyone with uh, when one of those languages testing until someone get hey I can't use that because it doesn't work on my browser and you have to that's why you need very different people yes. exactly and if, I cannot understand this uh, other direction at all so uh, in Arab, me, in Arab, oh not sorry <laughs> not, I don't understand my, yeah yeah no for example when you go to common site like Google and you suddenly everything is on the wrong side it's like oh, what <laughs> Uh, I dropped a GitHub link specifically for the WordPress playground issues area. Now I've mentioned GitHub. We will have that workshop. Hurry, I'm down to help if, if that's needed. Don't ask me to do the pull request part. I could do it, but I don't want to teach it. Uh, <laughs> but the part where you go in and you leave comments, think yes. of it on par with the WordPress forums, demystify the complication. If you can log something in the WordPress forums, you can log something in GitHub issues. Um, it, look around and see how other people have formatted their issue. Look around and see if someone else filed it, you know, basics. But the GitHub issues area, if you're finding some of those things that why does it do this, like the RTL, I believe that RTL issues were listed somewhere in the issues previously, um, some of the language directions. So that's where to go to log it. So there's a follow-up question, I think, for you, Olga and Courtney. Uh, so Sakib asks, uh, thank you for our operation. So is it preferred to test WordPress locally at the moment? It depends what you're testing and what you're planning to do. If you're just going to go in and take a look at the user experience of a feature, probably fine in Playground. If you're going to dig into the code, you probably want to move into a local environment of some sort, um, whether that be Docker or something. If you're sort of in between the two, local WP might be a good option for you or some other WYSIWYG kind of a setup for that. It really depends on what you're testing. Yeah, some REST API features better to be in local environment. Yeah. We have one more question from Sandro with that, which we missed. Uh, is there a way to make playground state persist uh, page reloading? Yeah, it's under that hamburger menu where you could say, yeah. like, when I refresh my browser, I want to come back to this. Yes. So the three lines that were in the top right when Patricia clicked, check mm -hmm. that. So uh, since you're already past, I'm going to uh, leave space for one more question, maybe. Um, anyone, any last questions before we wrap up? All right. So thanks, folks. Uh, thanks, especially to you, Courtney and Olga, uh, and even Patricia, she, though she's not here, and Nilo. Uh, it was really good to have all of you, and thank you so much for sharing so much. Uh, and thanks to all of you mentees and mentors here, uh, because I think we had a fun session. We learned a lot. I learned a lot. So I hope you all have fun with the mentorship program. I know we are, we have just started up week one, and somebody was saying it was a bit intense. Uh, well, we just had a lightest week yet. <laughs> but yes, uh, please take it easy for the next five weeks. We have a we have a lot coming up. But I know we have I know you all have other uh, responsibilities as well. So please take it easy. And as one of my colleagues says, drink a lot of water. Oh, I said that when Courtney was drinking water. <laughs> I, I'm drinking coffee. Is that count? Oh, yeah. <laughs> coffee yes, counts. Yes, of course. Coffee counts. Yes. So 
thanks once again and enjoy your weekend it was so nice being with you this one week and i hope you all have fun for the next five weeks i'll see you around in slack and in calls like this thanks again folks bye bye